All right. Well, it looks like we might have a couple more just trickle in, but we will go ahead and get started. So those of you that have been on for a minute, you heard me say this is our Clos U um, Getting to Know Your Clos Portal webinar series. So this was initially sent out for an hour invite, but we're sh shooting to kind of keep it between 20 to 30 minutes. Um, it's just gonna be an overview of the Clos Portal. Um, so what the Clos Portal is, for those of you that haven't played with it too much, this is a software that we as advisors have used behind the scenes for a couple of years now. Um, and we've recently turned it on for our clients to be able to access it. So that way you guys can see where we keep a lot of the data that we always ask for in our, uh, in our um, reviews and stuff like that. So again, this is going to be 20 to 30 minutes. We will do a, a question and answer um, at the end, but also if you have questions throughout this webinar, you can actually just enter it in the chat. Otherwise, there's a Q&A function in this webinar as well. So if you look in your screen down towards the middle center, you'll see a Q&A little messaging bubble and a chat messaging bubble. So I will be monitoring those throughout the webinar. So if you have any questions that you want answered as we're going through stuff, please type them in there. And like I said, I'll keep an eye on them. Our presenter today is actually is going to be Josh. Many of you may have spoken to him already. He is a portfolio analyst and he's been with Kloss for just over three years now. Um, he was kind of one of the ones that spearheaded the rollout of Kloss Portal. So he has a ton of in-depth knowledge to go over with everybody. Um, and he's helped train the rest of our team on it as well. And so the, the goal today is again, not to go into super deep detail on your individual questions and things like that. If you do have very specific individual questions, please give our office a call. We will be happy to point you to a Clos Portal specialist that can get those, those questions answered for you. So what the Clos Portal is, like I said, it's a technology platform that we as advisors enter a lot of the data that we keep for you guys in here. And it also is linked up through your, some of your accounts and things like that. So this is a newer technology. Some of you have been with us for a long time. You may remember the consolidated report was kind of where you went to pull down your um, kind of total balances and things like that. We no longer have that, obviously. We've migrated everything over to this new Clos Portal software. Um, and again, it is a technology. It is a very, very in-depth technology that does a lot of cool stuff, um, but it can get overwhelming. So what we're gonna do today, like I said, is keep it basic. So most people just kind of wanna log in somewhere and see their balances on a you know weekly or monthly basis. Some of you will do it daily, even though we advise you not to, because the market goes a little crazy from time to time. Um, so this is, this is again, a, a huge technology that we rely heavily on now. And like I said, it's, it's for you and we want you to get at least comfortable getting in it each, each day if you wanted to or um, when you're going to use it. Also, this is a vault. So you have a vault on your, your login as well that Josh will touch on. That is very, very important as well. Um, because we would love to be able to share documents through the vault as people get comfortable using this technology um, because that is a lot safer than sending email statements or anything like that. So we will touch on the security protocols and all that kind of stuff with the Clos Portal as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Josh and he will give us a rundown of what we're going to cover today in depth. All right, excellent. Thanks so much, Kyle. And actually, let me see here. I will go ahead and start my video here. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, start with the Clos U, getting to know your Clos portal. We're going to focus on three main areas today, like how I was saying. We're going to focus on registration. We're going to focus on a brief overview of some of the different areas that you can go to in your Clos portal. And then we're also going to look at the vault and kind of unleashing the power inside the vault and what you can do there from day to day, harboring all your files. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the registration process. Uh, the registration process, I wish I could show everybody a live demo of it, but unfortunately it does require live real client data. So what I'm going to show you here is a, a very simplified little presentation. We're going to talk through it, some of the difficulties that we see a lot of our clients have with this, um, and teach you some of the tips and tricks if you have yet to uh, set up your class portal. So we'll go ahead and get started there. So when you initially uh, get invited to the Clos portal, you're gonna be sent an email from our staff here. It is not a process that you can start on your own, unfortunately. It is something that you either have to have your advisor uh, start for you, or you can call in and like Kyle said, talk to any of our Clos portal specialists and they'd be more than happy to send you an email for registering for the, uh, this software. 
So once you receive that email, um, you'll see it over here on the left hand side, register for your financial website. Uh, today we're going to be following John Training 3, one of our training clients that we utilize for our uh, team training. Um, when you receive this email, you do want to make sure that it didn't end up in your junk email. So if we've sent it, it typically comes within seconds of uh, us sending it. So if you don't see it immediately inside your email, go ahead and check your junk folder and look for Kloss Financial. Once you click the register now, you're going to be taken to a website uh, called the Kloss Portal, and it's going to take you through a number of steps for registering for your uh, website. The registration process can be a little long, uh, but it is a single time process. So once you get through the registration process, you're, you're in and out. It's pretty easy to go in and, uh, and view anything that you need to. So uh, going through this registration process, the uh, in initial login, you just set up your username and your password. Your username does not have to be your email address, so feel free to change that. Uh, but you will have some password requirements uh, when you uh, initially set up that password. Uh, it is a pretty simple process. It's pretty typical and similar to a lot of other uh, online logins. Once you get past that, some of you might not be familiar with this, uh, a two-factor authentication process. And the reason why this exists is to uh, create this already secure tool and make it even more secure. A two-factor authentication is simply going to uh, send you a text message to your personal phone number that you type in here uh, into the two-factor authentication. Um, and it's going to send you a six-digit code that you'll have to type in each time that you log in. And it can be a little tough compared to some of the previous technologies that we'd offer, offered here at Kloss, but it is that much more secure and it is really helpful to have. Uh, it's great knowing that uh, when you log in and you view your, your information, that it is protected by uh, significant security factors. Um, I'll pause real quick to uh, talk about this a little more. Uh, on top of the two factor security, um, Kloss Portal also has firewalls that help create barriers between uh, this application itself and the open internet structure. All your passwords are encrypted and only known by you. Uh, that is a key piece. So if you do forget your password, unfortunately, that is not something we'll have access to, but we can help you reset the password if you do need to. Once you uh, go through the process of setting up the two-factor authentication, you'll be taken to a very specific area, which is called verify uh, your identity. And this is probably our number one area where uh, some people get stuck in the registration process. Um, so I do want to uh, take a few moments and go through this pretty specifically. Um, this is, uh, again, an extra layer of security to make sure that the right individual is logging into the correct website. Um, and so when you go through this, it's going to ask five very important key questions. Your first name, your last name, last four social security, date of birth, and yes, you do need to include the, the slashes in here, and then your zip code. Uh, and the zip code is for your legal residence. For those of you that have um, a winter home, it would not be the winter home zip code. It would be your primary uh, zip code. The most common problem that we find with this is, is some internet browsers will go ahead and autofill this entire section for you. So pretty typically, we'll see over here on the right where you're supposed to only put your first name, you'll go ahead and you'll have your whole name auto-filled in there, which is really helpful on a lot of other sites. But for this, that's not what it's looking for and it'll create problems. The most common thing to look for is an email address. If you see an email address on this page, it means that it's pulling in the wrong information. The easiest way to work past this is to simply just delete out each and every field here and then just go ahead and type everything in by hand that it's requesting. If for any reason you do all that and you still have troubles, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, we can look up to see which of these are the trouble areas that you're having, um, and we can help you out through that process. Once you get past that, uh, you'll have to just set up uh, some basic security questions. If you do forget your password, you can always call us to have it reset, or you can go through the security questions process to try and get that unlocked. Um, you'll accept the uh, site terms and conditions, and you'll be allowed in for the first time into the Kloss portal. Um, each time you log in from there, you'll just want to go to our website, click the client login, and there will be a nice helpful little button there to launch the client website there. So 
Now that we've gone through the registration process, feel free to ask some questions if you'd like to. I'm going to take some time now, and we're actually going to go in and log in for the first time for our training client. Uh, and I will go ahead and show you some of the overview pieces. All right, so right here is our uh, website. I'm sure many of you have gone here before. If you have not, it is very simply clausfinancial.com. Up in the top right hand corner, you'll see our client login. When you hover over it, it illuminates. Go ahead and click on that. And you'll have access to three different logins here. The majority of our clients will specifically use the Claus Portal login, but we do have some other helpful links for you if you need. Fidelity.com is our, our secondary most popular uh, link. So when you want to log in, go ahead, log into the Claus Portal. It'll open up a new tab. Actually, let's go ahead and sign out here so we can go through that process. Um, I would also recommend bookmarking this page so that you have it uh, permanently and it's easy to get to. Um, once you log in, you can have the system uh, remember your username. I'm going to go ahead here and type in the password. And when we log in, each time it is going to send us this uh, verification code. And so the verification code is going to go to that phone number that you typed into the system. And we'll see it pop up here uh, on your phone. So if you are on your phone when you're logging into the system, you will need to jump to the text message, copy the six digit code or remember it and go back to type it in. But here we're on the computer and I have my phone right here and we can go ahead and log right in. All right, so when you log in for the first time, this will be the screen that pops up here. Um, immediately, you're taken to a page that gives you a broad overview of your financial picture. This is the crucial information that we look at uh, when you come in to meet with us, when you call us on the phone for advice. Um, this is the basis for what we do for our financial planning. Um, all this information is incredibly pertinent to uh, your personal life and, and how we provide advice. Um, up here on the top, you'll see different tabs for different areas that you can go to. We'll go there in a moment. You do have a help and a settings page as well, as, long, as well as sign out. But right here on this home page, for the majority of you, this is going to be the main area that you'll spend your most time. Um, on this page here, you'll see some basic information for your net worth. This is a summary of all your investment accounts, all your cash, your property, uh, loans, everything. It'll all be summarized in this one number. To the right here, it shows your investments, and this is all that but it just subtracts out your properties uh, and any loans that you might have, just showing you what you have invested. On the left here, it's gonna give you a summary of a, a bunch of different accounts. So you're gonna have your cash accounts, which we always typically update during each meeting. You'll have credit cards, taxable accounts, and these right here are very specifically your after-tax investments. Uh, there are going to be items like joint accounts, individual accounts, trust accounts, a couple of other options, but that's primarily what you'll see here. Typically, you only see one or two different accounts here if you have any. Tax advantage. This one right here is going to be your IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, um, annuities, uh, different accounts like that. Uh, the reason they call it tax advantage is because all of those have special tax treatment to them. Taxable accounts that are after-tax accounts don't necessarily have those special tax treatments. That's why they're separated out to be a little bit different. You'll also find life insurance cash value if you have whole life universal life, information on loans, and you'll have a summary of properties. In here, you'll, you will find all the information that we list out on our side. So you'll see homes, rental properties, and you will see vehicles on there if we've entered that information in. On this page, you are gonna see in a couple of different areas, uh, something called link accounts. And this is an area where you can click this and it will take you to a page where it, it makes an attempt to aggregate all your financial information and update it every single day. Um, this can be helpful for some, but some people might not want to do that, and that's okay. We can simply update values of your accounts each time that, uh, that we meet in the office. 
Um, linking accounts does involve logging into the financial institutions. So if you had a cash account that was through US Bank, when you click link account, it's going to want to take you to the US Bank website so that you can log in and approve the link to there so it can up upload the financial information on a daily basis. It's helpful for a lot of people, but again, it's not necessary. If you do see that we are missing an account on here, feel free to add in an account if you'd like. Again, not necessary. You can bring it up during your next review and we can always add that in during the, uh, during the meeting. Down here on the bottom right, there was a brief uh, summary information of just your protection. So life insurance values typically aren't included in your net worth uh, information unless if they have a cash value to them. So it does summarize your biggest life insurance policies down here at the bottom if you have any. All right, the next area I'll take you through is going to be the organizer. The organizer, we are going to breeze through a little bit here. There was a lot of information here, but the biggest thing is, is that it's really just personal information here. Um, and the information that you're going to see here really just has to do with family, uh, properties, and uh, different contacts that you have. And this is really helpful to organize everything in one location so that if you need to remember a birth date, if you need to remember a phone number, an email address, it's very easy for you to come in here, look up that information, um, and be able to utilize that. Um, if you see that we're missing any information, feel free to toss that in, but not need it. Um, the one area that I will focus on is the professional contacts. And this is the one area that we see a lot of our clients uh, utilize a lot. The professional contacts area is an area where you can see a list of all the financial professionals that you work with uh, on an annual basis. Right here at the very top, you see Kloss Financial Asset Advisors, that's us, and it gives our contact information here. But in addition, down here at the bottom, you can have a list here of all the different uh, professionals that you work with, so attorneys, um, accountants, uh, insurance agents, uh, different items like that. And this is really helpful for one, it allows us to know who else you work with in case if you ever need us to contact them. Uh, but in addition, if anything were to happen to you and, and you had to have anything, uh, just a list of uh, people to contact uh, to take care of any financial pieces, by having this here, not only do you have a single spot where you have all this pertinent information, but we also have access to it. Uh, it gives us the ability if somebody's coming in and has permission to speak with us and we need to give them contact information to somebody that sh they should speak to, uh, this just gives us an easy way to aggregate all that information for you on your behalf. The next area that we'll take a look at is the investments area. And this is the other most popular area that uh, a lot of our clients will go to each and every day. Um, inside here, um, you'll be able to go in and take a look at each and all of your uh, investment accounts. And so a lot of our clients have Fidelity accounts. So you'll typically see in here Fidelity after-tax account, Fidelity IRA, Fidelity uh, Roth IRA. Um, and as you look at these accounts, you'll be able to see the current value of those accounts. Um, and you'll be able to see if that is currently updating. One of the key things to look at here is underneath the positions as of, and it'll tell you if that account has been updated. Fidelity accounts will update each and every day and should typically have uh, the previous day with three or four o'clock, depending on when the system updated it. Right here on the top right, I do wanna point this out. Um, this is our balance history area. All this shows right here is just what the balance has been over the lifetime of having these accounts in the system here. Um, it can look a little odd, especially if uh, not all of the accounts have been in the system forever. So right here, we did not have all the investment accounts inside the system. But then um, in December, January 2019, we added a, a bunch more accounts in here. And it does, it does make the balance history look a little weird. But just know that this is not a performance report. This is simply just showing the balance over time. When we click into each of these accounts, uh, this might be helpful for some, might, might not be that important to others, but you can see the individual holdings within these. So when I click on the Joint Fidelity After-Tax Investment Account, it's going to pull me into a separate screen here that allows me to see the actual holdings underneath that account. We'll show the values of each of them um, and the quantities that you have to them as well. 
you want to click back and go back into the other area, you simply drop this down and you can click in between the different accounts or simply click all investments. This is an area that has a bunch more to it. I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but if you do have specific questions on this, please feel free to reach out to uh, a Kloss Portal Specialist here at Kloss Financial or reach out to your advisor during a review. Uh, this is something we're more than happy to go through with you. So that covers the brief overview of the Kloss Portal and all the, the important places that we recommend going into daily or uh, just to look at some information inside the system. We try to keep this system as up-to-date as possible for you so that when you log in, you don't have to go through uh, hoops just trying to get it set up. When you log in for the first time, we want it to be as complete as possible. Um, so if it's not complete, please let us know and we'll continue to work on it over time. But uh, uh, we think that we've done a pretty good job getting uh, most everybody's information in the system. Uh, one last note on this before I do move to the vault area. Uh, I know that it can be a little scary seeing all your personal financial information in one area. Uh, and so we have talked about the security elements of the Clause Portal and how it's uh, um, a very, very secure tool. It has bank level um, encryption, has bank level security settings on it. But the other key thing is that this is just a uh, information tool. You cannot transact in this. You cannot withdraw money. You cannot make changes to anything in the system. Uh, so everything that you see here is simply just information that uh, you can't really do anything with unless if it's just for your purpose. Um, so if somebody had the, the opportunity to log in somehow, got through all the security, um, they cannot take any money. They cannot do anything at all. Uh, this is just information. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the vault. And the vault is uh, one of our great, great tools in the Kloss portal. This is an area where you can upload and save documents, uh, a place where you can share documents with us specifically. And again, this does it on a very secure basis. So for incredibly important documents uh, like trust, um, tax documents, um, reports. Uh, this is a great location to save those if you want to have them protected uh, in a safe location and always be able to access them. So these folders here are preloaded. Uh, so you can just come in here and you can start saving documents in each and any of these folders. You can make adjustments to the folders if you'd like to. Um, you can do really anything you need to inside, uh, inside this tool you can upload as much information as you want to. There are no data limits uh, uh, with this tool. Uh, that I know if, if any of you have cloud uh, access, uh, you'll quickly know that uh, they charge either monthly or annual fees, uh, depending on how many gigs of data you have in the system. Uh, this tool right here is great because you can save whatever you need to in here, um, and there is no data limit on when you click into these, um, you will notice that they have little shared symbols next to them. Um, you can have a folder here called My Private Documents. And this right here is information that is for you and you alone. We cannot see anything on our side of the system at all. So if you want to go ahead and upload a bunch of information that really has nothing to do with us and you just want to keep it for your personal records, feel free to go ahead and upload that information here. If you do, however, want to purposely share information with us, we utilize the shared documents folder. And this is where we upload information for our meetings that we, give, uh, that we have with you. So when you have a review coming up, if you've had Kloss Portal for a while, you might actually have gotten an email saying a document's been uploaded for you. And that's where we upload our reports that we go over with you during reviews uh, inside these folders here. If you do want to go ahead and actually share information with us, you can go into the shared document folder and you can create a brand new folder. And you can go ahead and upload documents here. It is as simple as drag and drop. So you can pull up uh, a window here, drag and drop it into the, uh, into the vaults. 
Now the last area I'll take a look at here is the settings. As I just said, you do get email notifications uh, when we go ahead and upload documents to the vault for you. If that's an annoyance or you want more emails uh, for uh, some different information like weekly financial summary, um, if you link some of your bank accounts, you can turn on some of these informational pieces here. But if you wanna turn off any of the uh, documents uh, as documents are shared with you, you can go down here to the bottom on the settings area and turn off documents shared to you. Now, when we upload documents, it won't just automatically upload and uh, forward an email to you. And that right there is the Kloss Portal Overview. So I'll go ahead and uh, stop talking here. And uh, Kyle, do we have any questions coming in? No, no questions yet. Um, so if anybody has come up with a question, please go ahead and answer it down in that either the Q&A or the chat function down there. Um, that way we can get Josh's answer for anything like that. Um, also, Josh, if you want to touch on the brokerage documents inside the vault, that's yep. where their fidelity statements would be. Thank you. Yes. So I don't have it specifically on this because this is a training tool. However, when you go to the uh, vault area, down near the bottom, you'll have a folder or near the top, depending on how you organize it, you're going to have this folder called brokerage documents. And those documents are specifically related to Fidelity. And all your Fidelity accounts will go ahead and upload their statements, uh, tax documents, uh, different reports that you, uh, that you might have on there, and they automatically get generated to that folder for you. So as your uh, 2020 tax documents come uh, through Fidelity, they will be automatically uploaded uh, into this tool here. Hey, Josh, we did get a question. You might have just answered this. Can copies of tax documents get uploaded for all investments? So not all investments, but they do for Fidelity. So if you have any other accounts uh, that, that we help you with, um, like Nationwide, Jackson National, American Funds, uh, those do not automatically get generated to, uh, to this tool, unfortunately. And just so you guys are aware, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but um, this will be, we are planning on, rec this is being recorded and we will likely post this on our website for, for future reference and we can send out an email to everybody that's attended as well with a, a link to this video. to so go back in it and, and go through it again if, if anything, you want to rewatch it or anything like that. It does take us a lot of time, so don't think it's going to be there tomorrow or anything like that. It will take us a little bit of time to get it up on the website, but we do plan on posting it for those that are curious about that. All right. Any okay. other questions? Oh, one just came through. What's the phone number to get the registration information sent to me? Actually, that, I will pull it up on the screen, but that is just our um, direct line, right, Kyle? Yep, that should just be our direct line. So it should be um, either 815-877-8440, and that would get you right to our office, and then we will have one of our um, class portal specialists send that out to you. I will go ahead and pull up that information right here on the screen. Uh, if you go to our website, you can find it on our about page and our locations. And you'll see that information right there and you can get connected to any of those individuals. Okay, how do I change my phone number on the organizer page? Let's see if we can actually do that right now. So let's go ahead and go into the organizer here. I believe what you can do is that you can simply click on your name and you should be able to click edit right up here in the right hand corner. So the contact tab right here. So I'll go through that again here a little bit slower. I wasn't sure of the answer until we just did that now. So um, you go to the organizer tab within the Kloss portal tool. Uh, then you click on your name and you'll be able to go to the contact tab right here, click edit, and you can go ahead and edit your name here or your phone number here. Now a very key important piece here as, as this, uh, this address uh, is pulling up on the screen, um, 
updating in Colossus Portal does not send us an automated message of, hey, my information's been uh, changed. Um, if you do move, uh, if you change your phone number, please still let us know. Uh, we can always update this during a review. Um, but it is very important that we do know about address updates. Um, updating inside the Clause Portal, unfortunately, doesn't send us an uh, automated uh, message. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So like we said, uh, guys, please feel free to reach out to our office if you do come up with any questions or want more specific in-depth um, answers to anything or specific questions pertaining just to your situation. We'd be happy to, to answer them for you. Um, like I said, we will plan on posting this on our website. Oh, we just had one come through. Um, a registration email. So we will send that out to, to you. So that the, the registration email has to come from someone in our office. So I'll make sure that we get that out to you. So we will do that. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, I think that does it. So everyone, thank you for joining us. We hope this was informative. Like we said, we wanted to keep it kind of high level just to kind of give you a rundown of what the class portal is. Cause like we said, it can get really overwhelming when we start getting into, into big details on each one of those tabs and all that kind of stuff. But please, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions, as I said, and we will help you any way we can. So, all right, with that, thanks everyone. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to continue helping you guys. So thank you. Thank you.